Good afternoon, viewers. I hope this finds you all very well and that you are enjoying your midweek because it's only a couple of days till the weekend. Although, are there even weekends anymore with everything going on? With lockdown? People working from home? Let me know how you get on in the comment section. I care about you all. I genuinely do. Plus, like, I've been self isolating for a while now, so I need some friends. But these guys are all my friends because they're doing me absolute justice at the moment. We are back top of the table, but only by two points from Manchester United. With 12 games to go in the season. Five points ahead of Chelsea, 10 points ahead of Spurs. Of course we are. And more importantly, 11 points ahead of today's opponents, Manchester City. But that's not really what we're focusing on the league. Today also marks the start of the knockout stages in the Champions League. And you would say we've been given a rather favourable tie against Real Sociedad. The other important thing is that there's a lot of big games going on elsewhere. Barcelona and Chelsea, one of those two is going to be going out. One of PSG and Real Madrid is going to be going out. Very, very important that we hopefully get through this and then get a decent draw in the next one. My old team, Hefe Berlin, is still in there, but they're losing 2-1 to Milan as it stands. Anyway, let's not worry about the Champions League yet. Do the Premier League. We'll talk about the Champions League in a bit. But more importantly, I've realised that we actually have to talk about what's happened since the last time we met. Because quite a lot has happened since we lost 2-1 to Man United. We won every single uh, game in our Champions League group. Let's get that out of the way. Premier League has been good, but a couple of really bad results thrown in there. I'll just talk about the bad results. If you just assume that we haven't we haven't drawn a game yet this year. like We are literally all or nothing. So we've not drawn a game. We lost 5-1 away to West Brom. Don't ask me how it happened. We just lost 5-1 away to West Brom. Um, they just took every single chance that came the way. We just didn't turn up. You can tell that only Roland Schneider played any sort of decent football. It wasn't good. We bounced back, though, and then went out in the Carabao Cup to Manchester United, which wasn't good. And then we had a 4-0 humbling at home to Chelsea, which is the first home game I've lost since I took charge of Liverpool. Very, very disappointing. Not a good day in the slightest. And Chelsea do seem to be a little bit of a bogey team for me. But ever since then, we've won every single game. So it's all about bouncing back. The whole of January, we won every game, including difficult games against Tottenham and against Newcastle. Uh, and now we've also continued winning every game in February as well. We've had a little bit of a break uh, where we beat Dynamo Kiev in a friendly just to keep people ticking over. And so, like I said, we're taking it back against City today on our return to the Premier League. And then we'll have Sociedad afterwards. Good thing I don't repeat myself, isn't it? Right, well, we've got to keep an eye on how United are getting on. They are away at bottom place, Burnley, and Chelsea are at home to Everton, so they're two games you'd expect those two clubs to win. So pressure's on us today to beat City, who are currently down in fifth, like I said. Not playing particularly well, not had a very good save, in all fairness. They've not been at the kind of level that you would expect City to be at. In terms of injuries, there's only one really big one, unfortunately, and that is to the ever-present and ever-amazing Ernesto Camps. He's kind of come out of nowhere this year. 13 goals, 18 assists in only 27 appearances. It's it's Kuka-esque numbers. He's absolutely amazing. And I'm gutted I'm going to be missing him. But it's only for another three weeks or so. So hopefully he'll be back in time for the Champions League quarterfinals. That's what I'm hoping anyway. We have got a capable replacement in Einstein. This is the whole point of having a really deep squad. So, from the back... Claudio is in goal. Golunski, Bakita, Eschner and Orozio make it the back four. Eschner's played very well since I brought him in. Uh, Weavers and Tunkara are in the middle. Then you've got Yao, Asteinson, Kuka and Schneider. Of course. Kuka, by the way, in absolutely scintillating form. We'll get on to him in a minute. He's in the high 20s for goals. So I expect him to do me the business today. I mean, let's talk about it right now. I mean, yeah, his attributes are beginning to go down, which is not a good sign. This might be the last prime year I get from him, but you can tell here he's made 31 appearances, 27 goals, 11 assists. The guy is just, he's just incredible. And then you look then at City. They've got our boy Katanek up front. He's done very well. We've got 17 goals in 29 appearances. So maybe I'm going to regret selling him to him. Carlos Cesar, we had a Hertha Berlin. He's had a decent season. Uh, we spoke about Donald Sutherland before. He was a player I kind of wanted. They're really good player. Well, I say really good player. Their best player is this guy, apparently, Leonardo Cesar at right back. And you can see why, although he's actually a left back by trade. So that's interesting. He must be an inverted right back. But the guy I fear is this guy. He always tends to score against me. Is Clement Andrietti, and he looks amazing. So you can see why uh, he scores against me, because he's brilliant. He's listed as an elite attacking midfielder, whereas Ernesto Camps isn't, which disappoints me. Right, I'm going to say to the boys assertively, uh, go on there and carry a strength for you did in the last match, because we won that very, very comfortably. 
Annoyingly, while I was monologuing, we missed a goal, and I just completely mucked up. So basically, this has just happened. 11 minutes in, Kuka stands over a free kick, and I mean, I don't know how I missed it, but Bakita heads it in. I just bug it up. I won't lie, but we're 1-0 up. Okay, I'm going to go back to live now, because I feel like I mucked that up. Basically, what I was saying is that the defeat to Chelsea was painful. Losing to West Brom is not good. Losing 4-0 at home is unacceptable. But it doesn't look like we're going to do that today because Bokita's already scored. So, happy days. And soon as Kuka adds another assist to his list. Schneider. I mean, City got to get themselves together here because when we start getting going, we can run away with games very, very quickly. It'd be good as well if we could get this win because then it would put a lot of pressure on it. I told you about Clement Andrietti. He scored. I don't understand how he's not their best player. He always scores against me. It's his 14th goal of the season, which is pretty good for a central midfielder. I mean, that is gutting. Sutherland whips in a good ball, but Keita's head is not the best. But, I mean, you go ask questions there. Maybe Claudio's a little bit unsighted. It's not good, though, is it? 1-1 one, one, out absolutely nothing. It's been a messy start to the game, both in terms of my commentary and also in terms of our play. I cannot believe that they've scored from a set piece. The one thing we are very good at in this game uh, is, well, we're definitely good at attacking set pieces. A lot of our goals come from set pieces. I just feel like that's a really poor goal to give away. And nothing has happened since that goal. We've been nullified, which is not something I'm used to because we're a solid 20 goals ahead of the next highest scorers, which are Manchester City in the league. So this was always going to be a goal-scoring game. This is pissing me off a little bit. They've had more of the ball, but we've had more of the way of chances. I'm going to get aggressive. I'm not happy with the way you're playing out there. Come on, play better. Bakita's done fine, but that's only because he scored a goal. He also made the very poor clearing header. I'd rather he just headed it behind, to be honest. He just headed it into no man's land. It was not a good header. First highlight since they scored, and they've given the ball straight to Eschner here. Eschner into Einsteinson. Einsteinson drifts forward on the ball and hits a shot wildly wide. That's That pretty much sums up our day so far. That's really not very clever for Einstein at all. I, Einstein, Einsteinson. I might call him Einstein. We've hit the corner end. That is insanely lucky. Tapo has headed it into his own net. I can't tell if there was a flick on from our striker or not, but that's a really poor goal giveaway. Kuka's delivery again is on the money. And no, it's not from our player. It looks like maybe their defender flicks on Tapo, can't read it. And Suleiman Tapo has given us a 2-1 lead, which we I don't want to say we deserve, because we don't really. We've not been very good. Normally I make changes when I'm very comfortable that we, we've got the game in the bag. I'm not feeling it so far now. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take Seydou Yao off. Galinsky's going to go up into the winger role. I'm going to put him on support so he drops back a little bit. Yao's coming off. And I give you, everyone, Ben Stockton. And Ben Stockton is amazing okay he's a he's a left wing back inverted though because he can only really play on his right foot but he's absolutely amazing and his overall form is terrific he scored one goal and got five assists in 11 games playing at 7.82 he is fantastic i'm going to put him on that inverted wing back and get him on automatic i want to see what he can do but putting him up against carlos cesar is maybe a little bit of a gamble, but I have faith that he can he can manage him very, very easily. Four minutes of added on time for what would be a very hard fought victory, but naturally it's never that simple. That's a great ball there from Claudio that we beat the press. Weavers over the top. Great ball into Galinsky. Jakob Galinsky. It's a stupendous tackle by Tapo to be fair. He's made up for the fact he scored an own goal with that block because that was definitely going on target. So I have to say, Cesar, even though he's their best player, has been absolutely schooled by Kuka today. And with four minutes gone, we'll take a 2-1 win. We've ground it out. That's the most important thing. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't necessarily a good performance, but we won. We beat another one of the big boys at home. That's what I wanted to see. Seven straight wins in the league, and you can tell now we're hitting our stride just when we need to. Annoyingly, I suspected United beat Burnley quite comfortably and Chelsea smashed Everton 6-0 and had a player sent off. So, yeah, not good. They're, they're also in good form. This is going to be a very tight end to the season, Premier League-wise. Well, here we are then, away in Spain for the first leg. Uh, Roma and Borussia Dortmund are playing at the same time, but we don't really need to worry about that so much. All we can do is focus on ourselves. We've only met them once before and we won quite comfortably. Their form is really, really poor by the looks of things. They are 7th in the Spanish First Division. But they do have one player that I think we should all pay attention to because we know of him. He's a bit older now, actually, as Edson Dosberg, but he's still 
a sensational striker. You can tell, even though they're struggling, he's doing very well. 21 goals in 32 games, 6 assists. A very much stat man today. So in terms of the team lineup, actually, I'm not going to... I'm not going to change, actually. I have to say, I think we played really, really well last time out. I have no... I, I don't see any real reason to change the team. We got the win. Played pretty comfortably. Got a bit unlucky to concede a goal. It's just a bit of a poor header out from a corner. Other than that, we've been very, very good. So... I'm going to stick with the same team that beat City at the weekend. I expect more from Yao, Steinson and Schneiders though. They were all quite poor. Kuka had a good game. Other than that, the rest of them were pretty poor. Schneider's captain, by the way, as well, which you can tell because he's got 17 leadership. He deserves to be the captain. Certainly 24 years old, could well become a Liverpool legend. You can tell here, in terms of league games, he's got 51 goals and 65 appearances, which is pretty spectacular. I'm going to passionately say, I expect nothing but a win from this first leg. I always like getting an away goal at least, and then taking them back to Argaff, because I fancy we can beat anybody apart from Chelsea at Anfield. So, really, we should be looking to win this game outright, or at least get a goal or two. That's why I'm going attacking. Get out there, get some goals, put the pressure on Sociedad, and if they want to come back and take it on Argaff, then let them. I started into a Rosie to Weavers. Weavers, that's a decent tackle there by Abasolo. That's a good ball to Tunkara. Tunkara, a great ball to Galinsky, down that left-hand channel. Galinsky works the ball in. Kuka misses it, but Sadie Yao's hit the post. I can't believe it. Yao's been so much better today. Kuka has scored. We just keep the pressure on. It's the same old thing. Jakub Golunski into Sunez Kuka. It's his 28th goal of the season. He is he's unbelievably good. I've only had him for two years, but I've fallen completely in love with Sunez Kuka. He is just unbelievable. What a goal. Well, I was going to say what a goal. It's a very simple goal. Brilliant finish. Golunski's incredible, by the way. He's just so consistent. Golunski on the ball. Everything good we do comes down that left-hand side most of the time. Or the right. It, well, we're pretty good everywhere. Weavers into Bukita to Esh now. That's probably going to be my central defensive partnership going forward over the few coming years, I think, if we are to continue the save. Arosi on the ball. He's been tripped, I think, there by Medjbury, who looks a lot like Medjbury, but he's not. His name looks a lot like Medjbury. You can't really tell... You can't distinguish players, I don't think, on this game. Oh, it's Hannibal Medjbury. Ah, oh, I know him. Yep, they've given a penalty. It's Hannibal Medjbury tripped a Rosie there. Our wingbacks are taking the piss at the moment. They're literally just destroying this Sociedad team. As soon as Kuka steps up, Kuka buries it into the bottom corner. He missed a penalty last episode. He's tucked a few away between now and then. It's his 29th goal of the season because he scored his 28th literally five minutes ago, Mike. Well done. Good mass. Great finish by Kuka. Never in doubt. Bit of a soft pen to give away. I don't care. We'll take it. And we are absolutely dominating our league and Europe. It's great. Kuka whips the ball in. Oh, Schneider should have buried that. That for him is a sitter. I can't tell if he's slightly out of form, Schneider, or not. He's not been at his fluent best for the last few months or so. Maybe he needs a rest. I don't know. I've got a decent player in Porteous waiting for him as they finally challenge Lewis Claudio. And he makes a decent save, but nothing really to worry about there. If I can put this to bed, it'd be great because it means I can play the backup brigade in the next leg because we've actually got United in the next game after this return leg. So... It'd be really good if I could win this relatively comfortably without conceding and scoring a couple more goals. Like a 3 or 4 nil, I'd be comfortable taking that back to Anfield. As Claudio makes another sensational save and they've come back into it in the last 10 minutes or so. A little bit, a little bit shaky. Come on, boys. Got to up it a little bit. Well, it's been a pretty decent half. We've played as well as we needed to. And at the moment, it looks like we're going to rack up the win. I just feel a little bit like we could have done... With a, no, another goal. Well, surprisingly, now that Seydou Yao again on camera is not playing very well. It's very irritating. As Weavers finds Kuka, Kuka's in down the right hand side. He hits it. I, I thought he hit it. It was a cross in the end. Yao on the ball. Can you actually do something good, mate? Sort of. I Steinson's on the ball. That's not another penalty, is it? Ref. I mean, I. Mm, he's going to the VAR stand again. I'll be back in five. Oh! Just woke me up because it was a penalty. Again, I, I mean, we got a bit lucky with the penalties here. Kuka for a first half hat trick. Buries it in the opposite corner this time. You'd like to think that's game over and probably tie over. And it means I can rest up soon as Kuka as well, which is ideal. The guy is in scintillating form. I cannot stop him right now. No one can. What a finish. <sighs> wow. 
Three nil. We've been gifted a couple of penalties by them with some pretty poor defending. Kuka's coming off. On comes Yannick Akoli. Uh Who else can I take off to rest up? Um, no one actually. I think I need to give the because Kuka at the moment is sort of like without sounding it, he's kind of carrying the team a little bit. I need the rest of the team to kind of catch up to him and get the get themselves together. Really, I need Yao Schneider and Einstein to sort of. D just do a bit more I think is the, the, the brutal way of putting it I just need a little bit more from them recently there's genuinely nothing has happened in this second half I don't know if my subs have kind of upset the balance of the team and the flow of the game but like literally nothing has happened in this half it's been really disappointing I was hoping that we'd go on and do a little bit more but we have got a chance to get a fourth here as Einstein is fouled by Venegas and he'll be suspended for the next leg which is a stupid tackle to make there's just no need for it Venegas is off. I Steinson wins the free kick and he's about to deliver it in as well. Are we going to have Rob Salt in the wounds? Porteous misses. Oh, Schneider probably would have scored that. Schneider probably would have scored that. I don't know why I'm complaining with 3 0 up away from home. It's a brilliant result. And there you go. 3 0, carrying into the second leg. What's not to like? Absolute scenes. I've said to the boys, well done. That was pretty much the ultimate performance away from home. We did really, really well. They had a couple of chances in the first half, other than that. Didn't create anything. Kuki gets a hat trick. What what can more can you say about him? I'm going to say you were superb in front of goal, mate. I love that man. I absolutely adore him. Maybe we will come back for the Saucy Dad game and the Man United game. If not, I might just come back for the United game because that could be a big one in terms of the league because they are our closest chances, only two points behind. Chelsea have still got a lot of fight left in them and they've been there and done it before so we've got to worry about them but really I have to say I think that we'll come back for the United and Saucy Dad games next time around that seems to be the best thing to do unless you guys think I can win the Saucy Dad game off the camera then we'll just have the one big one against United before we move into the Champions League quarterfinals it's shaping up that we might well be in with a chance of winning the Champions League this year but let me know what you guys think in the comment section and of course Thank you so much for watching the episode. If you have enjoyed it, then please do drop a like on it, share and subscribe. Go and check out all the other videos and playlists and stuff on the channel. And why not follow me on Patreon or Twitch or Twitter or Instagram? Because yes, I'm on there now as well because I'm rad. Is that what kids say? Probably not. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please do like, share and subscribe. Until I see you again, take care everyone and stay